are going to teach you how to perform a quick and accurate diaphragmatic movement test. This test is very important for all posture professionals and will help you understand the important role that the diaphragm plays in postural stabilization. There is a synergistic relationship between the action of the diaphragm, the pelvic floor, and the, ab the abdominal wall in addition to the lower thoracic and lumbar extensors in controlling intra-abdominal pressure. According to Smith et al. in 2006, disorders of breathing incontinence have a stronger association with back pain than obesity and physical activity do. Considering 80% of the American population presents with low back pain, would you guys agree that understanding the relationship between respiratory function and posture is vitally important? I thought so. Many professionals who are currently evaluating the diaphragm do so with the patient in the supine position to visually see their breathing. And although this does provide information about respiration, the information is more relevant to rib motion than it is to the diaphragmatic range of motion and intra-abdominal pressure. Let me show you the best way that you can do this. While doing this test, remember to look at the whole body. If you see that the patient has postural distortion patterns while performing the test, it means that the diaphragmatic movement is compromised. You may also see changes in color, activation of ancillary respiratory muscles, or fatigue when there is a decrease in that diaphragmatic range of motion. Okay, let's quickly run through how to check for the diaphragmatic function here. So we're going to be checking Dr. Krista. You can do this seated or standing. Most of the time when we do it in our examinations, we're in our exam room, we have the patient seated. You would normally have the patient on gown. Maybe if it's a female, they're just in their bra or you have them with a gown on. But you would like to be able to see the, the back as well when you do this. So you can check for hyper hypotonicity because you're always want to be checking posture when you're doing an exam. When the patient first sits down or assumes the standing position, you're not telling them that you're looking at their posture, but you want to check, see if you see any postural distortion patterns. So specifically when checking for the diaphragm, I'm going to have Krista put her hand in front and turn slightly to the side. What we're going to be checking here is you're going to have your fingers open like this. You want to use three fingers. You're going to be placing them at the bottom of the, the, the last two ribs. So essentially ribs uh, 11 and 12, you're going to be in between uh, 10 and 11, 11 and 12, and then the third finger is going to be placed right here underneath um, the 12th. What's going to happen is you're going to, at first, you're just going to watch the patient breathe. You're not going to say anything. You want to be looking for some symmetry on both sides. The ribs are moving fluidity, they're opening at the same time, closing at the same time, and you should feel the same amount of pressure on both sides. So, again, as the patient's breathing, the fingers should be opening as the ribs expand like this. They should be opening on the same, the same on the right and the left. They should be closing the same on the right and the left. You should feel the same kind of pressure on the right and the left. Then what you're going to have the patient do is go ahead and take a deep breath in for me. You want to see maximum intake or inhalation and breathe out. Okay, and now we're going to specifically check the diaphragm. So I'm going to have you take a deep breath in and hold that and push, try and push against my fingers here. And so when you do that, they should be contracting the diaphragm. You should feel the same, go ahead and breathe. You should feel the same amount of force both on the right and on the left. So go ahead and do that again, take a deep breath in, hold that and push against my fingers. Excellent. So you wanna see the, feel the same strength on the right as you do the left. You again are still looking for the symmetry, the fluidity, fluidity on both sides, and then relax. And so now the, the next test we're gonna do is if they can activate the diaphragm equally on both sides, we wanna see if they can maintain that activation during continued breathing. So I'm gonna have a deep, deep breath in, hold that, act, push against my fingers, great. And then hold this and continue to breathe. So you wanna see if they can continue to breathe while holding this activation. Again, the whole time, you're watching postural distortion patterns as well. If they cannot maintain good posture and activate the diaphragm at the same time, you know that there is a, a problem and a potential cause of injury in the future or a potential cause of, of current injury. So we're looking here to see if the diaphragm is causing a postural distortion pattern or if the postural distortion patterns are influencing the diaphragm. But that's how you can quickly and easily check for diaphragmatic function. When the patient has faulty function of the diaphragm, you will notice that activation is weak or absent. There's more rib movement superiorly instead of laterally, 
poor lumbar stabilization, you might see thoracic flexion or raised shoulders and clavicles. If this continues over time, the patient will present with an anterior pelvic tilt and associated L5 hyperlordosis with, with hyperactivity of the extensor paraspinal musculature. So you'll also notice that the patient is a chest breather, meaning that they raise their chest up and down with respiration. They're also going to activate their ancillary respiratory muscles such as the SCMs, the scalenes, and the pectoral muscles. You will want to teach your patients how to do diaphragmatic breathing. In addition to that, teach them a great exercise that they can do at home or in your office. Not only will this help to stabilize their, their respiratory pattern, it will increase lumbar stabilization to prevent injury of the lower back. For more tips, tools, and resources of becoming the posture expert, you can visit us at the AmericanPostureInstitute.com.